When buying a used boat, should you deal with a private seller or go through a broker? Well, I'm going to tell you how our experience changed my mind on that subject. First of all, I just want to mention that this is the third in a continuing series about how we bought that boat right there. Our new to us 1998 Sea Ray 370 Sundancer. Now, the reason I'm putting this whole series together is because we have bought that boat sight unseen. We have yet to go visit that boat in person and we have been dealing with a, uh, a broker as well as a surveyor and the survey video is going to come down the road. So anyways, if you look down in the description, I'm going to leave a link to the playlist that I'm creating for this video and the whole series and talking about buying a used boat, what we did and what we have to do yet to get the boat home and uh, all the legwork that's involved. Yeah, so here we are. It is getting towards the uh, end of February. I think next week is the last week of February and we are getting so, so excited. I am over the top with excitement to get that boat. But first, before we get that boat, uh, there's a few things I wanted to uh, go over with you. Yeah, so for those of you who are new to the channel, we are physically located Ontario in Ontario, Canada. That beautiful boat right there is sitting in Sandusky, Ohio. And that is why we had to deal with we didn't have to, but we ended up dealing with a broker, the broker who had that boat for sale. And uh, we've been dealing with him and it has been uh, a really, really good experience. And I wanted to share some insights on that with you. Now in the past, we have bought four or five boats privately and only one was uh, through a broker back in 2010 we bought our 400 sedan bridge in michigan and that boat was listed through a broker and we had a pleasant experience a good experience that one was a little bit different in so far as we weren't during it wasn't during covid and uh, the borders were open and it was free to travel and that was only a four hour drive from our home from where we were living at the time to where that boat was on lake st Clair, michigan it was uh, four hours if I really pushed it and I really pushed it. So we were able to get to the boat and look at it a number of times. First of all, do the sea trial and meet up with a mechanic, a surveyor. And I think we did three, four trips ultimately to that boat before we brought it home. So that was the benefit there. Now, this particular boat, we have a few more restrictions, not necessarily restrictions, but a few things that have been holding us back. First of all, it's a seven, eight hour drive to where the boat is from where we're living right now. And um, it's, it's COVID time, so everything's more difficult and time consuming. Now, I'm gonna say that I consider ourselves very fortunate to have found this boat being listed through a broker. And the broker I'm going to highly, highly recommend if you're ever looking to buy a boat yourself and you're not necessarily sure on what to do, where to go, how to look and what to look for, uh, this is the guy. This is the guy you want to call. His name is Cress Kemper. He's a partner at Catawba Yacht Sales in Sandusky, Ohio. Very close to where this boat is sitting. Surprise, surprise. And Cress was able to hold my hand, as it were. Um, yeah, I had, as, as you can imagine, I had a million questions about the boat given the fact that we're so far away and given the fact that it's it's a lot of money that we put out and a lot of that was done on goodwill and the goodwill was built with the relationship that we built with Cress. Right from the get-go, Cress answered all of my questions. I, not only necessarily about the boat specifically, but he put me in touch with a mechanic to, to look at the boat as well as detailing company and he went in so, sort of as a uh, not really a recommended but after the fact I had found a surveyor and then I just asked him and he says yeah he's the guy that he would have called to and the surveyor was great and then I'm going to do a, a whole video on the survey process and what the surveyor found everything else about that boat at a later date. The next video is going to be about the survey and that process. Uh, because that was really pleasant as well. Sorry, I keep looking that way because 
my tiny little pussycat is chewing on stuff that he shouldn't be over there, but that's okay. Anyways, he's really looking forward to the boat too, uh, getting to the boat with us. So yeah, Cress was uh, ab ab above and beyond and still is to this day. Uh, I could imagine what it's like being self-employed myself. I know what it's like to deal with, let's say a newbie type of customer that has a million questions and stuff that you would think is common knowledge that every everybody should know that. So it can be a little bit, oh, that guy's calling me again. So I know, Chris, I know you're watching this, that there was more than once that he was like, oh, he's calling me again from, uh, from, from Ontario about this boat. But I must say, if he if he didn't answer the phone right away, he got back to me right away. Phone calls, emails, text messages, and I didn't have to wait forever to get a response, which was so important because the more questions that Anchor Girl and I had about the boat, the more quickly I wanted an answer. Like I said, we wanted to move on the boat, and we did. We moved really, really quick because Cress was able to help us right from the outset on the boat, sent me a ton of pictures, and uh, talked to him on the phone. Like I say, he was, he was always quick to reply, actually answer the phone, reply to my emails, reply to my text messages, and that was super fantastic and super appreciated and was a, a great motivating factor for us to move quickly on the boat and, and follow through with the whole deal. Because of course there's an offer and then there's a survey, mechanical survey, and so on and so forth. So there's a little bit of a process, but the whole deal came together. Oh, let's say from uh, the initial offer to the last <laughs> check being sent down to the States, again, on Goodwill, uh, was a total of two weeks. Yeah, 15 days, it was awesome. Now, before you ask, Cress at the outset did not know who I was. And when I say who I was, he didn't know that, you know, we had this following online. Um, but he found out just word of mouth in, in conversation with somebody that he had mentioned that, you know, I'm dealing with a guy from Ontario who wants to buy this, this sea ray And it's like, oh, I follow a guy online and blah, blah, blah. And one thing led to another. But I made sure at the outset not to mention that to Crest because I didn't want to skew the lines. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to influence that he felt that he had to frankly bullshit me just because, oh, you know, this guy's going to say something online, either good, bad, or indifferent about me. And I want to, want to make a good impression. And I mentioned that to him when he told me that he knew who I was, who Anchor Girl was, and all that we do, which was kind of fun. And, and I told him, all right, I said, you know, I didn't want to mention nothing because I didn't want you to start, you know, to, to, I didn't want to put any pressure on the situation. So, uh, like I say, he was really, really good about, a uh, good about everything and walked us through the whole procedure. And I would, like I said, I would recommend because of this experience, if we ever had to do it again, now Anchor Girl keeps telling me this is our last boat. So sorry, Chris, I don't know if there's gonna be any more commissions from us, but um, if we were to do, to do it again, I would I would seek out a broker like, like these guys were because um, we had, a, a, right from the get-go on this whole process, when we sold the last boat back in August, course right away I was looking at boats anchor girl and I were, were looking at boats online and there was more than one that we were willing to put offers in on and I'm not going to get into any sort of details but there was one in particular that we tried desperately uh, to put an offer on in on and I'm not going to say it was represented by a broker because the person we were dealing with I can't call a broker incredibly frustrating and maddening that whole situation and it really turned us off it turned me off I, I just like that said I'm done I I took a break for a week from looking at boats and that was pretty severe because we were like chomping at the bit to get on something because we wanted to get a new boat for us and get it to our marina for the end of 2021 which obviously never happened but that whole uh, experience was a real real turn off and it was maddening it was frustrating 
because again, no communication, really poor communication. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's all I'm going to say. If I see you in person, maybe I'll go into some details, but I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. So like I say, that, that turned us off. We had another, we looked at some other boats. We had, I think three of interest and, um, yeah, it, it just, it just didn't come together. Now that was leading into January. Anchor Girl was a lot more uh, <laughs> worked up about this than me. And I had to keep reminding her it was only January and, you know, uh, launch time is a long way away. Um, and this boat just came out of the blue. And as I had said, right from the get go, uh, ultimately we wouldn't find a boat, the right boat would find us. It would come to us. And that's how this situation worked out. So yes, definitely dealing with a good broker would probably be a very good experience, especially if you're either not familiar with boats or you're not familiar with um, um, the whole buying process and what necessarily to look at, what to consider, what to put in an offer and any other coaching that uh, a broker may able to offer you. Now, uh, for us, the benefit was there was a huge benefit insofar as that, you know, since this is our sixth C rate and this is the third of that vintage and the third with the same powertrain and everything else as our uh, previous two C rates, I had a lot of confidence in the boats without even seeing them. I researched that particular model enough and I read enough uh, stuff online um, that I was probably more informed about the boat that we bought than the last three owners were on that boat. We had that background knowledge about boats in general and that boat in specific and really laser, you know, sea race of that vintage. So we had that confidence to move forward to buy a boat sight unseen. But again, if you are new to the market, if you're new into boating and you're not quite sure as to what you think you might want or need in a boat or what you should look out for or issues that may come along either in a particular boat or a particular listing or that line of boats, again, a good knowledgeable broker is somebody that will help you take your hand and help you through the process. Um, like I said, we've been doing this for almost 25 years. We've bought a number of boats so I can I can go with confidence into a private deal like a private seller deal but this time around and the last time around when we bought our our last boat our 330 Sundancer uh, just some people weren't <laughs> really committed to selling their boats uh, funny story when we bought our when we were buying our 330 Sundancer immediately after we sold the 400 boom right into the market and I had three boats lined up three 330 Sundancers all the same vintage basically the same boat to go and see on the following weekend and it's it's a done deal so we're going to go see two on Saturday one on Sunday and by the Thursday of that week leading up to that particular weekend all three email me text me phone me and just said yeah no sorry we're not selling we decided to take the boat off the market until next year Honestly, I felt there was a, like there was a conspiracy against me three in a row, like three all at the same time. Wow. And then we had another boat during that whole deal. Uh, somebody I was talking to, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe we'll take it off the market. We'll see what happens in the spring. He contacted me. Um, actually, we were in Florida and said, yeah, it's back in the market. You want to come? Yeah, we talked more money. And I said, if it's all that we're talking about, we'll come look at the boat. I will give you a deposit and we'll, we'll, we'll call the boat sold. Yeah, sure. No problem. So we actually coming back from Florida, we took a loop de loop way around so we could come and see that boat in Ontario the day before we hit the border. And we were actually, ironically in Ohio, got a text message from the guy. Yeah, no, sorry, Paul. Um, a uh, guy showed up today and we made a deal. He gave me the offer, uh, made a, a deposit, gave me a deposit and we made a deal and the boat sold. That's like, come on, man, like give it a shake. Anyways, the frustrations there were people who weren't, I don't think as committed to selling a boat or willing to pull the trigger if they actually came down to having an offer. Whereas I believe if somebody has a boat listed through a broker, 
they're more of a mindset that I want to sell. I'm committing to paying a commission and handing it off to a broker that I can trust to sell the boat. So with that, in that respect, I think you might have maybe a little bit more luck in making a deal because like I said, the people are, are committed to the selling the boats. I don't know. It's a, it's a crop shoot. It's a roll of dice. It's a really weird, weird market that we're in right now. So that's, that's all I can say is pretty much best of luck, best of luck to you. Yeah, so one final thing I want to say about our experience with Cress, um, him and his partner went over the top insofar as making the deal happy and good for us. We had a deal. There was not an issue with money or anything else, um, but Cress and his partner felt that the boat didn't show as well as it should for given the fact, again, that we're putting our trust and our faith in, in, in them to represent a decent boat. So they actually ponied up and helped out with uh, getting us a detail company in there and to do some cleaning because all the pictures that, that I've seen of this boat, I would call it a dirty clean boat. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's clean, but it hasn't been clean so much lately. The story I got that the boat came out of the water quickly at the end of the last season and they had the sellers had anticipated on doing a detail and a good clean over the winter. You know how it is. I'm guilty of that too. I get towards the end of the season and the side that's not tied to the dock, you don't look at it until the boat's hauled out and you go, e -e -e. <laughs> so I'm always, you know, on top of that first thing in the spring, polishing and making it all really look good for the, for the coming year. And uh, so that's kind of what happened there. But again, Cress decided that good first impression for us when we actually finally get to the boat and step on board uh he wanted it nice and neat so they are dipping into their own pockets to uh just you know not crazy but do a little bit of having a little bit of detailing done on the boat so it's um love at first sight even though i'm already in love with the boat so um i can't promise that you will have that particular experience but i just saying i'm just putting that out there that was something that we didn't ask for it was uh it was just it was just gonna happen it was just that's the way it is so i was really impressed about that we both were anchor girl and i um one more one more reason to give a good thumbs up and a high recommendation for those guys Even if you're not seriously in the market right now today, but you're looking towards buying a boat in the future for this coming season, or maybe even later in the season next year, whatever, I highly recommend, strongly suggest you get in touch with somebody like Chris right at the get go. At least you have your hook in the water, so to speak. So if something comes up because things move really, really fast in this market, this particular boat, just came out of left field. It wasn't there, boom, it was there, then it wasn't there, then it was there. It just, it was floating around and just boom, and we hooked and we grabbed and we got it. We're, we're super happy about that. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you're in the market, you're thinking about buying a boat, even if it's not for six months or a year, probably best to start shopping now because the market is tight and I don't see it, um, freeing up much over the next probably two years. Economy's strong, money's still cheap. People wanna go boating, so yeah. There's still deals to ha have. I'm gonna fi finish this off by just saying, we did spend more money than we had anticipated, but like I said, this is probably gonna be our last boat, so we just said, you know what, Let's let's go all in get a boat that we're going to be happy with long term and spend the extra money we were forced to otherwise we'd be still still sitting here and looking online and wondering when that next boat's coming up so yeah act quick
So yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Again, I have talked far too long, but I hope that maybe I gave you a little bit of insight. Um, like I said, this is the third in a series about us buying the boat. The next video is going to be talking all about the survey process, uh, the marine survey, the mechanical survey, and what was found and what has to be done to the boat. And yeah, that was... Uh, that was that was a fun process another really positive process and i will talk to you about the actual survey and give you recommendations on that video as well so until then look forward to your comments let me know please if you're in the market if you've had a similar <laughs> experience even now or in the past with with deals that didn't become uh that didn't bear fruit as it were or if you've dealt with a um, a broker that you were happy with yeah throw it a name if you haven't been happy with a particular broker i don't want to hear any names again we don't want to throw anybody under the bus here but uh, yeah just let us all know your experience because not only do i read your comments but of course a lot of other people are following along and they want to they want to get as much insight as they can yeah so absolutely leave a comment and let us know your story and how it's made out and how you have made out how you make it out and how uh, where your journey has taken you okay yes i'm gonna leave it there and i am looking forward to all that you have to tell me and i will see you in the next one till then cheers mm -hmm.